So the series of videos that we've done so far on the entity framework, we started off by talking about the concept of ORMs. Then we went into a simple CRUD operation on a single table using entity framework. Uh, we did an insert update delete on a single table. And then we went into the concept of validations. We went into one to many relationships. We went into many to many relationships. And in this video, we're going to talk about inheritance. And the kind of inheritance that we're going to talk about in this video is called table per type inheritance. And the reason why we call it table per type inheritance is because every entity in the entity model, even though it's inherited, is typically going to have a database table associated with it. So in order to illustrate this example, let's quickly go into the database and let's look at the cars table, which we created in the first video. It had a car ID, which was an auto increment identifier for this table. It was an integer. We had brand and model, which were in care fields. Now let's assume that in this system now, I want to create Japanese cars and German cars and Japanese cars are going to have additional details and additional columns associated with it. Whereas German cars are going to have a completely different set of columns associated with them. So I'm going to create two different tables. Let's start by creating Japanese cars table and we're going to create a primary key called car ID out here. One very easy way of creating one to one relationship is share the primary key across tables. So that's exactly what we're doing here. You have cars table which had a car id we are also creating a car id here and we'll draw a relationship between these two making them one to one so we have car id now we're going to store a region in case of japanese cars the region in which these cars were made so, and we're going to store let's say additional details and both of these are going to be in care 150 and we're going to save this as japanese cars and we're also going to go ahead and create a new table called German cars, which is also going to have a car ID, which is an integer. Let's quickly make this a primary key. And in this case, let's say we can store additional brand details in case of a German car. And let's mark this as n care 150. Let's go ahead and save this as German cars. Let's quickly go and draw relationships between these three tables. So let's throw cars, Japanese cars, German cars in there and spring cars here, spring Japanese cars and German cars here. And we can draw a relationship using car ID. And let's draw a quick relationship here using car ID. So these are one to one relationships that I'm drawing making relevant changes to the database tables. We don't require the diagram, so I'm removing the diagram. Let's close all these windows. Let's go back into the code. Let's go ahead and look at our business model and let's do an update business model out here. And this time, let's go ahead and pull the relevant tables that we require. So we require car, we require Japanese cars and we require German cars. Let's pull all these three in and notice that when I do that, Entity framework automatically goes and creates a one-to-one -one relationship between cars and Japanese cars and cars and German cars for me. And that's fine. I can, I can live with that. The only problem that I have with this is if I was to instantiate a Japanese car, I would actually have to create a car object first, save the, save the values to the database there. And then I would be able to create a Japanese car entity object. Instead of doing that, let's go ahead and use uh, inheritance instead of this association. So we're going to go ahead and quickly delete this association. I'm going to go into Japanese object and say that my base class or my base type is in for Japanese cars is going to is, is a standard car. So what I've done is I have replaced my association with inheritance and let's do the same thing for German cars. Let's say that my base type is again cars. Now, once I do an inheritance, what is important is that because German cars and Japanese cars inherit out of cars, they are automatically going to get this car ID. So they do not require this car ID. So let's go ahead and remove the car ID because they're automatically going to get that. So my model is done. I'm going to go ahead and build this. Now, let's say if I wanted to disallow people from directly creating cars in my database and all I wanted people to do was either create a Japanese car or a German car. In that case, I could have gone ahead and marked my car object to be abstract, which means people would not be able to directly instantiate it. So that's something that we've done here. It's not necessary, but we've gone ahead and done that here. So now let's take a look at 
creating a Japanese car. Now let's go ahead and create a Japanese car and let's take a look at what our object context was. In this case, our object context was called sample DB entities. So let's start by doing a using. It's a good idea to use a using block because in that case your object context gets garbage collected the moment this block is over. So let's go ahead and start by creating a Japanese car. And let's start adding a brand. Now brand comes in here because Japanese car inherits out of car which had a brand. So let's leave this as Japanese brand one. And let's have a model number which is 195. Japanese car also had a region associated with it. So let's mark that as region 1 and it has additional details associated with it. So let's mark that as something. So that's my Japanese car. Let's go ahead and also create a German car. And this time I again get brand because German car also inherits out of cars. And let's say German brand. I get model number again this time let's mark this as 197 and German cars had additional brand details and I'm going to go ahead and mark this as anything this column was there in the German cars table not just the cars table so uh, notice that entity framework is getting the relevant attributes for me depending on the object that I'm instantiating and these will go to the correct table so let's go ahead and do a db dot cars dot add object and because both German car and Japanese car both German car and Japanese car inherit out of cars I should be able to add both of them to my cars so let's go ahead and add the Japanese car and let's go ahead and add the German car to the cars collection and let's do a db dot save changes and let's do a console dot right line cars added to the database and let's do a console dot read line and let's go ahead and run this code and notice that when this code runs what is happening is we are never touching the cars object directly but in fact what entity framework is doing is it's going ahead and adding a Japanese car it's going ahead and adding a German car to the to the database and it's going ahead and adding the relevant details to the cars table as well so fairly interesting in terms of the fact that entity framework uses inheritance to figure out which table to write these values to. Now let's assume that I wanted to get a Japanese car back. So in this case I would not get a direct Japanese car on my object context because Japanese cars and German cars are now inherited out of the cars. So let's go ahead and get cars of type Japanese car and now let's do a singular default on top of it and say where Japanese cars had region Japanese cars had region yeah so let's do where region equals region 1 it goes and fetches the relevant Japanese car for me now in this Japanese car let's go ahead and change the brand to Japanese brand 3 and let's go ahead and do a save changes. What's important out here is that even though I'm fetching a Japanese car, I can come and change the brand of the Japanese car and brand is essentially a part of the car table. If you look at it, uh, it's Japanese brand one. That's essentially a part of the car table. But this time when I change it on the Japanese car object and I do save changes, it's going to go and remember that and it's going to make the relevant changes in the underlying car table, not on the Japanese car table. So let's go ahead and say Japanese car saved to the database. Right? And run this code. And let's go to the database and notice that this Japanese car 1 has changed to Japanese car 3. So that's your table per type inheritance. What we basically covered out here was the fact that every entity, even though it was inherited, for example, this Japanese car and this German car 
had an underlying table both of them stored common information in a single cache table which we blocked the user from accessing by marking it abstract we could have left it open and then people could have just created cars objects instead of creating only japanese cars and german cars but we wanted to block it so we blocked it by marking it abstract and now people were able to create japanese cars and german cars and we could actually get a japanese car back using this off type and then we were able to make changes to attributes of the japanese car and even though these attributes were mapped to the parent table cars it went ahead entity framework went ahead and made the appropriate changes so that's your table per type inheritance using entity framework in the next video we will cover table per hierarchy inheritance model and then we'll go into data services and take a look at exposing my entity model using data services so that it becomes a rest based api where i can access it this is all we have in this video thanks for watching bye